Mona Lisa is all about me. It's all about you. It's all about our stories. The stories that never get told, but ought to. Whereby water transportation does not make financial sense, it makes economic sense. I was there for two and a half hours on the floor. Nobody attended to me. If we don't take care of the poor, the poor will take care of us. It's about getting at the root of things and hearing from the horse's mouth. We have 15 public hospitals to make them affordable. In the whole of Africa, we are bigger. You know, Nigeria, we sleep, eat, dream, fashion. Those with the uh, financial backing don't see fashion as an investment, which makes no sense. If they do it for free, they won't have money for the next case. Mona Lisa is about real life and the real lives, yours and mine. Make a date with Mona Lisa and together let's ensure that the important stories get told. Welcome to this maiden edition of Mona Lisa. And we certainly have a rich menu in store for you. First up, we look into the state of our transportation system. Making Lagos our focal point, we examine the roadmap to decongesting the traffic hotspots of Nigeria. What are the consequences of continuing along the same line? We hear firsthand from a key player in the industry and of course from you, the commuters. Nigeria has a population of over 200 million and Lagos constitutes over 10% of that. It is expected that mobility of the masses will be a logistics issue. We were told recently by the Minister of Power, Works and Housing, Babatunde Fashola, that most of the 300 billion naira allocated to road infrastructure in Nigeria has already been spent. Referred to as a city that never sleeps, Lagos has a population of over 21 million across nearly 1,000 square kilometers and is predicted to become the world's largest metropolis by 2100. In just two generations from 1960, the city of Lagos has grown 100-fold. Is it merely a problem of population growth, outstripping developments of infrastructure? Is it a congestion problem, indicative of human negligence and a failure to plan? With a population of over 200 million, clearly congestion is a major issue for Nigerians. Lagos in particular is known for its epileptic traffic. Basically, the traffic has been manic, to be honest. I kind of go out only when it's really important and when I know that there's no traffic. The traffic in Lagos is, um, is generally been perennial, but in the last few weeks it's really worsened, especially along my roads, which the lake area, it's, it's been Look out. terrible. It's epic, I'll call it epic. I mean, someone described it as um, a tourist attraction, actually. So that means that it's something that people come to experience that they can't experience in other parts of the world. Why are things the way they are? We went seeking reasons for this malaise. I don't know what's causing this traffic. Maybe everybody has a car now or something, you know. Most major cities are experiencing traffic issues, um, but employers are looking for innovative ways to actually um, work so that their employees remain productive. A lot of the issues that we find um, in terms of um, car mobility on the roads is actually that our roads are not fixed. They have a lot of potholes, they have a lot of issues, and you end up having to slow down to make sure that you don't damage your car. That then builds up. Aside from the daily headache, congestion has far-reaching consequences, sometimes resulting in a matter of life and death. I actually feel sorry for the, the Lagosian worker because they have to, a lot of them experience hours and hours and hours um, in traffic every day. I mean, four hours going to work and four hours coming back from work. That's a full-time job already, so it is a bad situation. Not too long ago, the nation was rocked by news of an explosion caused by a fuel-laden tanker along Lagos Ibadan Expressway, or Tedola Bridge, killing many people and raising about 67 vehicles. The Tedola incident was principally as a result of, um, uh, I, I would say, mechanical factor on the fact of the vehicle. But when we did our, our forensic investigation also, we discovered that um, that truck was actually 
carrying, the number of liters it was carrying was more than what the head of the truck can actually push. Most importantly, her driving culture. Could we, had it been that there were actually, um, uh, there were gaps, they, what we call the following distance between one vehicle and the other. I don't think that uh, number of vehicles would have been uh, affected. With such a costly price tag, why is it that not enough is being seen to be done? It's not a new thing. It's just that here, uh, I don't think that we have the willpower to make the changes. Yes, everybody complains, but nobody has the will or nobody wants to do anything about it because it can actually be resolved. A lot of the issues come with the fact that governments are not transparent. They're not they don't give information out easily. If there was a plan, a long-term plan, I think people would feel like, okay, the tax I'm paying is going somewhere. I can see that in one year you've achieved what you said you would achieve. So transport planning and urban planning in general in Lagos State is, um, is a bit of an issue when it comes to long-term planning. Um, and it's usually because of the change of government. It's, um, it's problematic for citizens. It's problematic for government. It's problematic for the staff that work in government. It's problematic for the private sector. With the population growing on a daily basis, clearly we cannot continue along the same trajectory. What should be our immediate and long-term roadmap to recovery? We thought with the advent of the Lagos buses um, to actually force some people to, to go on the buses and we have less uh, vehicles on the road, but uh, that doesn't seem to be working. Uh, but there is an opportunity in Lagos that uh, is yet to be tapped, and that is the, the waterways. So there is a whole lot of opportunity that can be tapped by the Lagos State Government by actually providing ferries. We've had about Fort Mainland Bridge for so long, and uh, that's also, I uh, think, uh, if something is done about that, it can, it can help to decongest uh, at Lagos. And of course, um, this is a very low hanging fruit. Because we have a lot of potholes on our roads now, and um, uh, especially with the last uh, bout of rain, so it's really worsened, and the traffic uh, also worsened as a result of that. So if that can be tackled, I think that is uh, the easiest thing to do, really, at the moment, to ease traffic on Lagos roads. Ekene Ezeji, reporting for Mona Lisa on Plus TV Africa. Well, I'm glad to say that the traffic did not hinder our guests from joining this vital discussion. We ferry to the five carries terminal, Falomor, to join our distinguished experts for an analysis of the facts and to chart the way forward. How would you rate the transportation system in Lagos and, of course, in Nigeria overall? Generally, um, transportation in Lagos, in my opinion, is... Um, is something, it's a journey that we've just started in terms of being clear about what Lagos needs and also in terms of the relatively small land area that we have and um, in terms of investments that uh, the governments both at state and federal have made into the transportation sector. But then again, when people complain about the perennial traffic we face in Lagos, what is the thing that you're doing that we don't seem to see? Well, you know, I've uh, heard uh, different versions of the same question that you've asked. And, um, but I like to say to people that um, in order to understand a phenomenon, you need to contextualize it. Lagos is a city that has grown in leaps and bounds. In the 60s, just by around the independence period, Lagos had a population of under 3 million. So between then and now, that population has moved to 23 million. So Lagos was a political capital of Nigeria and economic capital. Even, th even though the political has moved, the economic has increased in Lagos. So people from all different nooks and crannies of Nigeria head to Lagos seeking greener pastures, as they should do. But what that does is that because we have not, as a people, invested commensurately in the infrastructure that should drive that population, it was inevitable that we we're going to get here. I think we've been fortunate in Lagos because we've had one political group that has been in government since 1999. So what that tends to accord us in Lagos is 
the prospect of continuity that you've talked about. If we talk about BRT, it wasn't started in this administration. Uh, it continued with Amberdy, and you know you, mu you must have heard that some new buses, uh, bus terminals are being constructed. That's building on the foundation that Fashola started in terms of the bus reforms. And it also allows us to learn from mistakes that we've made. For example, during the Fashola era, Lagos experimented with the bus rapid trans uh, transit mode, which in all, for all intents and purposes is a step in the right direction. We also learned some important lessons because at the time, Lagbus was an operator. So we've learned since then that government should really not be in the business of business. So right now, we've reformed from being an operator to now being a regulator. And in my opinion, I think we should also be an enabler of the process that will provide efficient mass transportation for Lagosians. Why are people, individuals, companies, not rushing to invest in state transportation? Is it just solely for this something for the government? From the research that I've done across different climes, there's one theme that uh, is consistent. Public transportation is not terribly profitable. Let's use another city that's similar to Lagos. Let's use London, for example. London is to the UK what Lagos is to Nigeria. It's a commercial capital of the UK, and it also houses the stock exchange and most of the commercial activities that deepen the economy of the UK happen in London, just like it does in Lagos. For example, my opposite number in the UK told me that whenever there's a need for major infrastructure spend in London, the federal government over there, by whatever nomenclature it's called, pick up at least 40% of that cost, realizing the role that London plays in the overall economy. But unfortunately, since the political capital moved from Lagos, the federal might that should support the role that Lagos plays for Nigeria is no longer there. And it's something that I think we need to continue to agitate for. So it's a clear role for the private industry or not? Clearly, there's, there's room and for if private there's a, sorry, And yes. if there's the, the role for the private industry, what should that be? The private capital will come into there, even in terms of our own state's um, multimodal integrated transportation system where unrolling in Lagos. The private sector has a role to play. For example, the people who are going to operate the buses and the ferries are not going to be government workers. It's going to be private sector people because the profit motive is very important in making sure that very costly hardware millions of dollars worth of ferries lasts. The biggest mega city in Africa. There should be a huge commitment on the part of the federal government. And we're not saying that because we're Lagosians. Lagos is home to people from everywhere in Nigeria. For example, the port in Lagos serves not only Lagos' 23 million people, the port is actually serves two thirds of Nigeria's 200 million population, all the imports that come through Lagos ports. Has there been commensurate investment in the infrastructure that attend the port? Let's talk about the waterways. Yes. Um, what, um, has this, is this actually working? Is it, um, how are people responding to the waterways transportation since, think, since its launch? I think the waterways provide very great opportunity for us to develop that multimodal system. By multimodal in Lagos, by sheer divine providence, Lagos is blessed with an abundant water body, which we should harness to decongest the roads in terms of passenger and even cargo transportation. Right. So Lagos, Lagos, Lagos's waterways are there. I've spoken to the different groups about it, even the World Bank. So whereby water transportation does not make financial sense, it makes economic sense. Because most of what you see on our roads, those containers, 40-ton containers, right? They put pressure on our roads. That's why those roads need to be repaired as often as they do. Because those roads are built for like three or four tons. So that's why water transportation provides an opportunity. Because a lot of that pressure from the port, which is by the water, should go onto Lagos waterways, for example, 
and taking through the water all across the corridor on the water line there. So most of the trucks coming from out of Lagos don't even need to get here. So we at Lagos State Ministry of Transportation have developed a blueprint from that that we're taking through our own approval process. What future projects are there in the pipe pipeline? Oh, um, if you notice even along our water uh, landscape, you would have seen that there's even a new jetty in the Barriga area. If you go on Third Mainland Bridge, you just look there. You see there's a new jetty there, and there are different jetties being built up, and there's some more that are in the pipeline to be built. And we're also in the process of uh, starting a pilot uh, water transportation uh, project in partnership with the University of Lagos because the University of Lagos has research facilities to help us get the studies right. It also has a waterfront and the university has um, uh, agreed to collaborate with Lagos State through our ministry to start the process of doing ferry, uh, to do the studies first of all of the students and the staff in different places that they live that are close to jetties around Lagos. So we can start that as a pilot. So with that pilot, then we intend to scale up. So we need to replace cars with efficient, high capacity buses, which will be clean and affordable, like the new set that Lagos State has procured over 820 of them, all air conditioned and Wi-Fi enabled. So we need to take cars off the road and introduce those ones. Now, what about rail? Anything on that yet? Yes, uh, this administration has signed a uh, contract with Alstrom, which is a French uh, company. They did that about four months ago in which the first leg of uh, the movement of Blue Line, we call it, the one that's meant to run from Okokomaiko. So we're going to start the one that comes from Orile to yes. Marina. You'd have seen yes, I've seen construction the, yeah, work. Construction work. Well. Yes. They finished that should now. come on stream before too long. Oh, wow. Thank you so much for coming on the show, Mr. Ladin Lawanson. Thanks for having me. When next you're held up in traffic, I imagine that the insight gained here will offer some comfort. Now, moving on to the next segment where we join a notable personality as they chart their experience so far and attempt to predict what the future might hold. Welcome to The Journey. On this edition, we catch up with a woman after my heart. Mrs. Fumi Oyetunji's career that spans 35 years has experience in audit, financial services, banking and asset management, has a resume that is littered with names like Coopers and Librand, ZO Osasanyi and Co. in Nigeria, KPMG in the UK. She is the author of the book, A Conscious Life. Mrs. Oyetunji, welcome to the show. Thank you very much yeah, for having so, me. Fine, thank you. Okay, so um, you have an impressive track record of achievements and all of that. So uh, were you brought up to believe that as a woman you can have it all? Does that sound sexist? No, it's actually not sexist. It's based on um, statistics and the reality of our lives. I mean, IWD. International Women's Women. Day, mm -hmm. the other day, was still talking about balance. Mm -hmm. So globally, um, there's still a lack of balance in the, in, in the success or in the genders. Mm -hmm. So it's not sexist. It's what you ask mm -hmm. because of the reality of our lives. I was very lucky that um, I had a dad who was very, very um, believing in me and was did not raise me at all, as a first child. He didn't raise me at all to think that I had a gender in the first place. Given the sort of economy we are sitting on at the moment, what are the possible steps one can take to invest, to do proper invest, investing in your business, and of course managing your wealth or money, basically? So, uh, Mona Lisa, you say I, I talk about the importance of money. Mm -hmm. I'm usually careful because there are two aspects of talking about the importance of money. There's the money is all, which is not healthy, but it will also be fooling oneself not to realize that most of the important things we have to do in life uh, is predicated upon affordability and money. The school your children go to, the lifestyle you get, the kind of um, retirement you can plan yourself. It's all predicated on money. Your influence in the extended family, it's predicated on having 
what I call financial independence. Mm -hmm. So as a family woman, is it uh, possible that you can have it all? And what are the secrets to having it all? Okay. And are there any regrets? I, I, I like that question because it's, it's, it's a question that bugs women and it bugs women and women don't know how to actually um, work around it for their own fulfillment. Um, this year's IWD's uh, theme is balance for better. I know they're talking about gender balance, but in my head, I have another slant to it. To, for a woman to be fulfilled in this day where we're trying to have family, uh, have a good career, have a good business and do everything, it is important that you know in your head what balance will fulfill you. I have had sacrifices whereby I became part-time uh, working mother, where I traveled, were moved solely for the purpose of marriage. Hmm. Those are sacrifices. On the other hand, I also knew what I had to be stubborn about in terms of my career. So it is left to each woman to define those different aspects and the balance that will have them fulfilled and if you're able to achieve that, that's having it all. I, I think I would have been a terrible mother if I didn't have work. work. So it, it's a juggling that you mm. need to do. But having it all, yes, you can. You can have it all. All is what you define all to be. Let's yeah. talk about your book, The Conscious Life. So why do you think we should live consciously? It took five years to write that book. And I think um, I wrote it after I thought... I kind of had enough from my own journey, from me raising my own children, from counseling church, counseling everywhere else, young people and grown up people because of the financial advisory. I see an array of lives and what people have done with their lives. Mm -hmm. And because I'm a reading person and I, I kind of read about different aspects of life, I thought it would be a good idea to bring it all, all, all into one book. So my book is in chapters in all these different areas, kind of providing signposts, mm. saying this is usually, you know, there's no point trying to reinvent many things. Mm. It's usual. It's, mm. it's the usual signposts you find mm. in these different aspects of life. And I try to give as much advice from my own journey, from my experience, and mostly from a lot of study. So last question. What does the future hold for you? Ah, because that's, the future is still very so much... That's, that's a very good question. I'm a mother of grown-up professional sons. So um, I am very lucky that, apart from my day job of managing an investment company, I have been able to get involved in different aspects of work which are fulfilling in their own and coming together. So I run the company. I am involved with philanthropy. We, we, I chair a foundation that provides scholarship for indigent students. I sit on a few boards. So it's another aspect of work. So hopefully I will never retire. So the future, <laughs> the future, the future oh has goodness. that. But then also a very important part of my future is being matriarch to mm. my lineage and mm. that. I'd like to have you back on the show. We need to talk Thank to you, you, talk about politics. We need to talk about these different chairs, uh, different uh, um, chairs that you sit. We need to talk about if, a, lot, a lot of stuff, a lot of things with your children and all of that. As a people, we are constantly on the move. It is certain that any lack of development in our transportation sector would cramp our style and hinder our hustle. We have been told by the Commissioner for Transportation, Lagos State, that whereas transportation does not make financial sense, it makes economic sense. This tells me that we must have a long distance roadmap and there must be continuity built into our transportation projects. In the meantime, we are reminded by the sector commander FRSC that we can always play our part by consciously imbibing a safe driving culture that shows consideration for other road users. 
We can opt for public transportation or even walking where possible. We have learned that plans are continually in the pipeline to upgrade and develop our transportation system. However, money is a rate limiting factor. Money is needed from public and the private sector by way of partnership and investment. But first, there must be an appreciation of the long-term economic value of such investment, even when it doesn't make financial sense in the short term. I call it perspective. This same sense of perspective is needed when it comes to our personal development. Mrs. Oyetunji calls it conscious living. It is the ability to weigh up options and make deliberate choices and investments today for future benefits. So my takeaway is that in the transportation industry as well as in life, we must be conscious planners and deliberate investors since nothing worthwhile ever came about by chance. This brings us to the conclusion of our maiden edition and it certainly has been informative, inspiring and loaded. So till the next time when we bring you another engaging lineup on issues that matter to you, remember all endings are also beginnings. <laughs>